This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. All right, folks, Native Treasures Market here in beautiful Santa Fe. All kinds of stuff, all types of uh, different styles of art, lots of painting and jewelry of course, but probably some weaving too, lots of artists, I'm excited. Uh, I got a tip the last minute from a friend who said he was coming here and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to check it out. Unfortunately, um, we're using the GoPro today. Not the best focus, but it's still, well, that's what we're working with. Stickers. You have a sticker. Oh, I was gonna, okay, I was gonna ask if, you, if I could buy them. They're no, great. <laughs> it's just my logo, so you can. Awesome. Did you make these beads? Not the beads, I just strung them. Oh, it's Overall stunning. But all the beadwork I make, all the beadwork. Thank you for the sticker. Mm -hmm. uh, it's stunning. Did, um, did the, uh, you sure you didn't make the pendant? No. But it's amazing. I was going to ask you, how do you drill your holes? That's hard. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm too scared to, to do that. No, don't be yet. scared. Yeah. <laughs> What is your name? My name is Tessa, and Tessa. I'm Kaiwan Comanche. Is that you? That's you right there. Yeah. Do you dance as well? Yeah. Oh, that's stunning. I'm from the Southern Tribes in Oklahoma. Do you do this stunning yeah, beadwork? Yeah, I do all the beadwork. I draw 24 karat gold, silver plated, and those are quills. Oh, wow. And uh, where does this QR code take people? That one, uh, oh, that was from our uh, The Herd show. So that has my website. Awesome. Did you learn from your family? Yeah, my great grandma when I was about eight years old. She's cool, but I kind of oh, This is a k killer piece right there in the middle. Yeah. Nice. Intarsia. Oh wow. How long is this show? Uh, tomorrow till 4. Oh, it was yeah, with... the second day. Last so... night was just like the opening night oh, okay. for the members <laughs> of the museum. Thank you so much, Tessa. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Is this all Santa Domingo? Yes. Do you mind if I see your card? I think I saw you at the Indian market. Uh, do you do Indian market? Yes. Oh, you, it was, you were outside, right? Yes. Oh yeah, it was raining. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you make stunning hishi. I actually recognize your earrings. <laughs> and you are. Oh, I'm David. David. Yeah. Sorry. How long have you been making um, hishi necklaces? Since I was ten. Oh wow. <laughs> You know, you see a lot of jocklas, and the bottoms will be really rough. Yours are really smooth. Yeah. Are you folks the lapidary artist as well? Oh, that's why. <laughs> Obviously, because you know what I mean, right? Like sometimes the jocklas, will, you'll see the little flat spots, and yours are kind of, kind of perfect. Yeah, we do everything ourselves. The grinding, bending, polishing. If you don't mind me asking, so I. I can almost tell because um, you see some variation in your polish. Do you use Zam for your turquoise? Mm -hmm. Do you use Zam for shell? Yes. Oh, it'll work? Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. I didn't know if it needed something special for the shell. 
just have to be patient. <laughs> this is uh, Minnesota Pipestone, like f what they make the Chinooka out of. What would you ask for something like this? 450. That is awesome. Unfortunately, I don't have 450 to buy the awesome Calonite necklace, but maybe a pair of earrings. What are you asking for the earrings? The large ones, they're at like 85, 75, 65, 55, that range. Smaller ones are 45. Hmm. I'll get. Oh, they're also good. So where are you from? I live in Taos. I'm a lapidary as well, but um. I get so caught up cabbing for everybody else and never get to make my own jewelry, you know? I tell people, you know, the miner works his butt off, his or her butt off, mining all of this turquoise that they, st they have to pay to stabilize and they have to spend money then taking it to Tucson to sell it for $400 a pound. Then the lapidaries, we bust their butts to sell the cab for $40. The silversmith puts it in an $800 bracelet. So... You gotta make your own jewelry to make the money, and I get. Yeah. <laughs> I've been so busy working, just cabbing for other people, I don't get to make my own art. Mm. Um, let's do this pair if it's okay with you. Um, do you do cash only, or can you do a card? Uh, card. Awesome. Cash always helps. I'm so. I, I all I have is a card. I should go to an ATM, but I'll definitely take those if you can. Yes, ma'am. So you're part of the Taos hum? No, oh, I've never have. This one's 55. <laughs> awesome. I like this. It's like a, the book match to bear, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's what showed up. Do you think it's um, number eight? Or uh, maybe... It's not Sonoran, right? It's No, it's not Sonoran. No habla this one, español. This one is it's clear. That one's Sonoran. It's clear blue. Yeah, a lot of people don't like Sonoran. Um, doesn't come in vain. It always comes in nuggets. So it'll be like a pure color. And a lot of people might not understand, like, because you know, overseas in Persia, and they want the pure color. We want matrix, or we don't believe it. But it does come without matrix sometimes, and it looks like. You took the time to pick out pure pieces yeah. for your Yishi. Awesome, let me get these fine folks paid. These folks are super nice. Got Lenny some earrings. It's good to break the ice. Check these out. Very nice. Something you don't see a lot in uh, Native American jewelry. It's carnelian. Not just carnelian, it's faceted carnelian. Real interesting. Love the barrel beads of the Mediterranean. Not the super dark, 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 but it is really nice. I like the orange just as much as I like the dark red, honestly. Estela Loretto. From right here in Santa Fe, no doubt. Just a stunning jeweler. Using unconventional stone. I like it. It's modern times. 2023. I mean, for years, I had a... I was talking. Where was it talking? I think it was at the... Um, that, that last Native show that we filmed with the gentleman who ran the whole thing about why you see a lot of the same stone and it's, you know, a combination of tradition and then ease. Turquoise is so much easier to work than something like agates and jaspers and stuff. But, you know, these definitely were not faceted by the artist, but it's easy to incorporate now because those are not just affordable, but also um, abundant and convenient. You know, this artist probably goes to Tucson, probably sells out. Love, love those. Little white spot there, is that a... 
Odd matrix? There is white matrix. Seeing white spots on beads isn't an automatic giveaway that it's not um, a natural stone. Uh, I have some uh, Baja that has white matrix. There's the water web stuff that can have whitish matrix. This is stunning. It looks like a piece of bamboo mountain, perhaps. Hubei. There's nothing wrong with Hubei. There's, like, you heard me say a thousand times, there's Chinese turquoise that is just a hundred times better than some American turquoise. And there's dozens and dozens of variation. Love the hummingbirds. Love the hammer texture with garnets. And what looks like 10 to 14 karat gold, perhaps? Is this, um, is this uh, Bamboo Mountain, like Hubei? Uh, I think this is uh, from uh, Surios. Oh, wow. Yeah, Holy Surios. smokes. Yeah. That is amazing. Uh -huh. You're a fantastic artist. Thank you. <laughs> where, where are you from? I live in Taos. Uh -huh. What do you do? Uh, mostly turquoise. Oh. Um, I was just telling someone else, you know, I, I want to get more into jewelry, but I've been working so much cutting for other people. Oh. I don't get to make my own stuff. Uh -huh. You know, I buy the pound for $400, I cut the $40 cab, the, the jeweler takes the $40 cab, makes a $600 bracelet. Yeah. So I need to get back into that. Would you call the setting Pave? Would you uh, call that? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're set into the... Uh, and you kind of roll it around? Yeah. But it's so fragile, you can't see where it's been rolled. You're really good at what you do. Well, you can see that. Oh, wow, you go all the way yeah. through. I sat them in the, in the hall. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? Uh, a few years. Just a few years? <laughs> Two years, <laughs> You're amazing. Thank you, Stella. Okay. That's stunning. Is that what they call, um, I don't know if that's coral. It's a little too bright. It can be, but from the dichroic glass, that could be the Rosarita. Love the relief carving. I don't know how well you folks will be able to see that from here. But it looks like perhaps it's also in glass. Was it carved into like graphite and then um, casted for the relief? Was it carved into the glass? Either way, it's not. Um, either, they're both impressive. It's nice, it's alabaster. With some awesome. Would you call that engraving or etching? More like etching. The top of the face isn't polished. Um, it's obviously the same stone, but the polished part gives it a darker look. The top is unpolished. It's absolutely stunning. The bottom looks like granite. Uh, did they get that from like a granite table? Like manufacturer or something? The faces on these beautiful pieces, they're real modern looking, and I love it. Super playful. Just, it glows. Absolutely glows. Kathleen Wall. Didn't see this artist at the um, Indian market, but um, there's no real information besides the website. Might definitely check out the website. Award winner. The Herd Museum Guild, this year, second place. I imagine the competition must have been fierce. Right, right. Absolutely lovely. I love her, um, her uh, nausea and blossom necklace, but it's just the accents. But you get the gist, you know? I love the traditional clown. Black and white. You see a lot of these sometimes, at least maybe older style potteries or paintings where they're eating a watermelon. <laughs> and I don't. I wonder if it's just because it's such a stark contrast of color, the watermelon, 
and the um, black and white traditional clown. It's almost like a cream in black. Okay. If you ever want to see some real native clowning, go to the Taos Pueblo during the feast day on Christmas. You'll see him jump in between the um, traditional Pueblo houses. <laughs> and uh, the kids are terrified of him. <laughs> You'll see vendors uh, covering everything up because they'll come by and grab something off the booth. Not to steal, you know, play with it, leave it at someone else's booth. It's not a thievery thing. It's just it's, if you know, you know. Kathleen is an amazing artist. Check that out if you get the chance. This, I uh, don't know what kind of stone that is. Love the. They call it value, right? When like some of it's polished, some of it's not. This has got to be a little difficult to travel with. Um, or at least nerve-wracking. Love that the hair is carved here, but then it goes down into some scratches to make it look like a uh, the bottom of some hair. Tool marks. Tough to tell. I uh, don't think it's you know not chisel. Maybe you know other tools for sure. Very, very cool. I thought I saw the clown with the watermelon, but it's something else. Alright, we're super blessed to be speaking with Gary Custer um, about Tufa. How you doing, Gary? Good, yourself? I'm doing great. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about the Tufa. There's a lot of um, misinformation about it. Some people almost don't even believe it. Right. And it's something super special. Um, you know, I feel like the Anglo world almost knows more about cuttlefish than they do about Tufa. And this is night and day different. That's right. Um, so, it's a natural rock. It's not man-made. You carve into it. Usually one side, right? Yeah, one side. Uh, actually, this is the mold. Oh, wow. So you have the backing, and then you have the uh, piece that's carved on the other side. So when you open it up, after you carve it and, and you cast it, you'll have a piece inside there. Oh, wow. Which is uh, will be the positive that comes out of it. I did not, not know you could get it that thin. Not not that yeah, you can get it that thin, even thinner. It depends on the heat. It depend, depends on the heat. So lots of technique. A lot of technique, yes. A lot of trial and error. But this here, this piece here, won't come out looking. You know, it'll come out looking like that before it gets to this. This is already uh, filed and ready to be used. This one here. But the, the the mold that it comes out of, every time you use it, a portion of the mold will fracture and come out because of the heat. And you can only use the mold about maybe three or four times, depending on the stone. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so some people don't even know that you can reuse them again. Some uh, some videos say, you know, once, maybe twice. Yeah. Uh, but you can get a couple. And you, you, you can. And, and just like we were talking about cuddle bone, when you use cuddle bone, you can only get like one time. It's a one-time shot. And it'll, it'll disintegrate inside there. Um, where does tufa come from? Tufa, it comes from a various uh, various places around Mother Earth. Um, you, you, if you go to like Sicily, you, there's a, an abundance of it. You can even build a house with it. What? They're, they're in the mountains, and you can actually, if you if you Google uh, Sicily, and they have tufa stone, you, they build houses with the stone. Oh, but wow. here in the southwest, where we get these stones, you can get them in the dry dry uh, uh, river beds or up on a high little red mesa. kind of like cold, they kind of protrude every now and then, so not plentiful. So when you mine it, you pull them out, and when you hit them, they fall in slabs, because over 4,000 years, it's volcanic ash, which, which layers, it layers itself. So when you when you heat the inside of the tufa stone, you can actually pick it up and hold it in your hand, because there's layers, it comes like a little convection of them inside there. So that it's very hot, when you do that, when you cure the stone, you put the other side like that and pour the silver down in there. When you open it, 
immediately, almost immediately, it starts solidifying and you can hold the piece in your hand while it's still cherry red. And you put, 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 pull that out of there. Oh, wow. So it takes some of the, it takes some of the, this one here is from the 19, uh, the 30s. Oh, wow. Very, very early. And they used to use both sides. <laughs> oh, wow. You know? See, this one's just left like that. It's not even cleaned up. This was this was uh, left in a, in, a, in, a, in a trunk. Maybe a belt buckle. Yeah, oh. I, would, I would assume. Yeah, a huge belt buckle, I mean, a heavy one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but this is how they used to do these a long time ago. That is stunning. And if you can see, you can, you can see the texture in the rock. This is more coarse than this one is. And this one is like it's, it's like pumice. It's real soft. You use a you use an exacto knife. To carve the images, mm -hmm. and and to get the, can you, to get it cut, would you use a bandsaw? No. Yeah. What well, way you can use just use a, a hacksaw? Oh, well, just, I just my yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. You just, you just ma manually use a hacksaw, and then you rub two pieces together to make the surface to make a flat surface. Oh wow! And then you carve the image into it. So everything is reverse relief in these things to make a positive. And then, like we see here, then you can go ahead and fabricate on top of it. Yeah, you do the, you do the, uh, uh, you can do the, the, the lapidary work, and you can add up ornaments and stuff like that for, like, you know, that, for instance, that's a, that's a pendant. Yeah, and I love the bail that it's not sealed, so you can put it over beads. Yes, you can put it between <laughs> beads, or you can put it over beads or a necklace. Yes. Carrie, do you take a card by chance? Yes. All right, because I gotta get something from you, brother. Yeah. I'm gonna grab something. And then maybe we'll take a look at some of these. Oh, I got this awesome nausea. Had to get a Gary piece. I'm going to have to hide it from my grandma. She'll steal it from me. <laughs> Gary, do you mind if we take a look at some of your nausea here? Sure. So what's really cool about his work is... Um, like if you look at my nausea, my nausea is a little bit cheaper. This is a buffalo dancer. You could see where they fabricated the back um, so that they could just cast the nausea, then put on different stones. This is cool, it's practical, it's functional, but with, um, with Gary's pieces, they're not fabricated. This is solid cast, which means it was a solid carving. And the stone, Oh, it could be anything. Compitos. Compitos. Yeah. That makes sense. It's so brilliant. Yeah. Compitos can almost look just like Sleeping Beauty sometimes. <laughs> um, do you happen to ever? Do you ever go to Tucson for the shows over there? I've been wanting to for years, but I haven't. Oh, you got it. Always go. obligated that time. Yeah, I guess you're right. If you can't, yeah, you can't. Yeah. Do you mind if we look at some of your bracelets? This is obviously number eight. Exactly. You can't. That's it's 100 carats of pure number eight. <laughs> that is fantastic. And is is the bracelet casted or? Yeah, the bracelet's cast. A solid cast. Wow, and it's actually really affordable for a, for a stone like that. That's pretty darn affordable. You can get some cool textures like that. Oh, wow. That's stunning. Love the castellated bezel. Did you make that bezel? That's Keto. Is that called Keto, this shape? The shape, the shape, the shape. Is that, is that called keto, that kind of shape? Yeah, keto, yeah. Keto. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, keto, yeah. Keto. Is this uh, Baja, maybe? Yes. I don't know much, but I know turquoise. A little bit. <laughs> it's a learning experience. And it's all guesses until you know. And this must be Sonoran. That's Sonoran gold, yeah. Fantastic. And this here is Royston. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gary, how long have you been making art? I'd say about 38 years. 38 years? You must have been a kid. A little one. Still <laughs> in diapers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you do any other shows? Do you do the Indian market? I or? do. I'll be getting ready for that after this. Awesome. We do shows across the nation. 
And um, at the Indian market, where are you? Um, just but the, they could ask you on Facebook or Instagram. Oh yeah, they can. They just sure can. We're we're right we're right in front of the Five and Dime. Oh right nice. There, right off right off the plaza there. We're at a good location. We're on San Francisco Street. One second. Seven thirteen. There's 713 San Francisco. Oh, right nice. in front of the private nine. Right in the plaza. Right on the plaza. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> We're here with a stunning Danae artist designed by Andy. How you doing there, Andy? I'm good. Your uh, your work is stunning. You um what caught my eye was this gigantic number eight. Yes. What kind of machine are you using lapidary wise? Just a regular. Two wheels, six wheels? Two wheels. Two wheels. That's why I was asking, because you got space. <laughs> you know, most time people ask me, you must have a lot of machine, uh, you know, hydraulics and stuff, you know. No, I don't. This is, I want to be handmade. I don't want no machine part two. The only machine that I use is buffing polishing, buffing machine, that's all, <laughs> when it's finished. Stunning. So there's no machine involved. It's all done by hand. Even on these heavy gauge like these. That is just amazing. Uh, is that all number eight there in the Mediterranean? Yeah. You know, they say there's over 30 different variations of number eight. And it looks like he used the good stuff. Mm -hmm. this, is, <laughs> this is my best number eight. I would have thought that was Bisbee. It's so no. chocolatey. Yeah. It looks like Bisbee, <laughs> but it's number eight. Wow. Have you uh, been holding on to that piece for a while? Oh, wow. <laughs> This is number eight too, but it's not, I'm not crazy about this color, but the one that I showed you is... Well, uh, even that is better than a lot of stuff you'd buy in Tucson. Yeah, let's see. That is, that's still pretty good. Um, yeah, not afraid to fabricate some really large pieces. Uh, I believe that's even number eight. So, like we said, there's over 30 different variations. Some of, I mean, Andy's probably been doing it his whole life. Third generation, yeah. He probably has some stones from his father and his father's father. Nice piece of uh, bamboo mountain, perhaps Hubei. There's another stunning piece over there. Andy uses all kinds of stuff. And what really was interesting, um, on the other side, there's some non-traditional stones. And I was talking to some folks about... Someone was asking, why do you always see the Mediterranean? Why do you always see the turquoise? And um, even, you know, the white buffalo is relatively new to the scene. Well, it's a bit of tradition and convenience. I was saying, you know, we were talking about how you can cut 50 pieces of turquoise in the time it takes you to cut one agate. And um, it's a little busy. But uh, he's got some interesting stuff over here. He's got a beautiful piece of mukite. Even some bumblebee... Jasper over here, really non-traditional, but uh, does not skimp on the quality of silver work. Dino, That's that dinosaur, dinosaur bone. bone. Dinosaur yeah, bone. Yeah, something you just. That's dinosaur bone. Yeah, wow. a really nice piece too. Beautiful combination of cast and fabrication. Yeah, you can see some mukite from Australia, yep. some Indonesian palm root, some charite from Russia, ruby yeah. and fuchsite from India. The gentleman is not afraid to use non-traditional stones. And you know, it, you know, you might not have seen it 50 years ago. There was no internet. There was people from, you know, and stuff like the bumblebee wasn't even around 50 yeah. years ago. It's got some Sonoran sunset here, a little bit of Rickolite from Grant County. And uh, it's really, it's getting hard to find the um, Sonoran Sunset with both the red and the blue. When I was a kid, I used to get a slab for a dollar. Now, $160 a pound. And what is this black one, brother? That's uh, Labdorite. Stunning. I'm going to hand this to you. How long have you been working? It says third generation, so... All my life. Yeah, a whole life. Since nine years old. Um, if you don't mind me asking, do you have any like pieces of your grandfather and your father's my, work? I learned this from my dad. Is that the um, Newlander? Yeah. That's a, it's not cheap. 
they're not cheap. It's not cheap, but um, but uh, but also the you want a quality stone for quality work. You're, you're not you're not lazy and you're no. not you're not uh, what is it? You're not, you're not frugal. No. <laughs> hey man, silver is unlimited. So hey, I, whatever I give me heavy gauge, I'll do something with it. This is beautiful. Yes. It's a Zia design, the four direction. I oh, know, I'm talking about the stone. Look the, at the stone, stone is man. called um, Oro Grande, down south New Mexico. It's uh, It almost looks like a Peruvian turquoise. Oh but it's, it's New Mexico. It's got a landscape in it. I'm sure. Oro Grande. Very cool. Over here, he's got some Apache gold. Yeah, we're right. Some uh, Septarian. Septarian. And this, I would, let me guess, is it, is it, is it Mexican? No, I give up. Uh, bloodstone. Bloodstone, fantastic. I didn't mean to just grab your beautiful, is it, co good. is it copper or is it gold? It's uh, both. It's stunning. Copper and silver. And uh, it looks like you won, is that second place? Uh, yeah, I sold, the, uh, I sold the pieces. <laughs> Dude, Andy, you're stunning. Thank you. And uh, will you be at Indian Market? Yes, I will. Uh, where at? Uh, my booth is 242. 242. Right on the plaza. Right on the plaza. It was rainy last year. Oh, yeah. Did, was it rainy still good? Cold. Was it still good, though? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> on Saturday, it was rainy, but Sunday, everybody, re I redeemed myself. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, you're a blessing. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So, we are here with Veronica Poblano. Uh, stunning sculptor, stunning jeweler from Zuni. Thanks for chatting with us, Veronica. You're very welcome. So Thank you. you. I'm very happy that I met you. No, I'm stunning. And we're going to get those genies fixed. Exactly. That's a personal promise. Thank you so much, sir. I really, really, that would make my work so easier. <laughs> um, if you don't mind me asking, since your genie is down, what are you using? I'm using a cap king. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh -uh. It's like so low above the genie, and I when I saw the Titan, I said I want to get me that Titan. If it's the last thing I do, so that's what I'm looking for. We're gonna find somebody who wants to trade you. Sure, yeah, it's fine. I can trade in my old genies for a big Titan. That'd be so wonderful. Um, so your sculptures, they're not really done with like a flex shaft. It's done with the wheels with diamond wheels which is very complicated it's hard enough to make a heart really let alone is. a sculpture using yes. the corner the corner can gouge so deep that you have to make the sculpture significantly smaller exactly. Exactly. and um like this butterfly here it's all natural lapis stunning and then the green is looks like cerios or something to, i had to drill into the carb i had to smooth out this lapis lapis and then it was almost like a, a wave shape of lapis that I got and what was so interesting is that the white matrix around it was the natural formation of the lapis that came out of the earth and then there were specks different kinds of specks in here that I didn't like so I decided well I can take that in imperfections and drill some stuff and these are all made Ooh, with the inlays on the imperfection inlay. Inlays oh my goodness! To make it perfect, these are all Kingman turquoise, Morenci turquoise, in between here, uh, Kingman, Morenci, and these are all um, Caracol Lake, Orville Jack in here, Orville Jack Fostite. Where did you find the Orville Jack? I have a connection to Orville Jack. <laughs> I knew the lady that owned the mine, Grace Wintle. Oh my goodness. She used to send me care packages every three weeks. What a good friend. But one day I was so low on my Orville Jack, I called her. I hadn't heard from her in a long time. This was like about maybe five years ago. I called her back and there was no answer and so I left it and I said it was before market and so I I waited a while and I called her back and the husband answered. The husband's name is Jay. I said I I need to get a hold of Grace. I, I need some more Orville Jack and she, that was a long pause and I said Jay are you there? So is this Veronica? And I said, yes. I'm sorry, but Grace is no longer. Oh, no. She passed. 
I didn't know she had cancer, so she passed them. So the material is probably extra special to you. She used to send me big care packages, and I still have rocks like this. Oh, wow. There's one that's like a, a big pyrite sticking out like it's a diamond <laughs> embedded in there. And there's one that I want to do something that's shaped like a, a what Ryler. <laughs> oh, wow. A, a piece like this, all Orville Jack. It looks like a what Ryler. And then I have another one like this. I have like 18 karat gold I'm working on right now, but it's solid. But it's there was imperfections into the Orville Jack. I carved it out and I'm inlaying into the orval jack with coral and beautiful stones. And I'll have that for my next show in Indianapolis in June. Oh, wow. Stunning. It's beautiful. It's I can't be wait beautiful. to see it. Yeah. I hope you put a picture on your website. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. So the orval jack is real special to you because it was your... I love your, this it, stone. It's your friendship. After, I mean, if you ask Ernie, Ernie Montoya, the, the stone guy, you ask about Veronica and she's like, Orville Jack. <laughs> he teases me all the time because I love Orville Jack because, I mean, nobody has it but me. That is stunning. And, and uh, there's some Orville Jack in here, right here. Ooh, and some, yeah, and some, some opals. Royston and Chrysoprase and Orville Jack and Caracol Lake and Sujolite. Ah. Look at this oh, Orville wow. Jack here. And then the Moss Sits Sits. <laughs> oh, at the bottom, the Moss Sits it. Yeah, the Moss Sits Sits. And this is the Sujolite, Sujolite and Blue Peruvian Opal. That is stunning. It's so gemmy. Do you polish Orville Jack like turquoise with Sam? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's easy to polish. Yeah. It's like working with Caracol Lake. Exactly, maybe, I don't know, maybe three and a half weeks to really smooth down the surface, but you have to leave like parts of it a little elevated so it'll, it'll be what you want it to be. And so, you know, I, what I like to say is if you do something right, people might not notice you did anything at all. That rock was probably big. It was. You know what I mean? And so when they see that, they, it's so perfect. They think, oh, you know, yeah. it's, it, you know, she's, she must, she's, you're obviously a fantastic artist. I had to take off a lot of the crummy stuff that's, this was the inside of the mineral. This is the inside of the mineral that had to be grinded off smooth and to be portioned along here and to yeah, create the create the legs like that it was hard i mean look at it this is the rough part of the the whole amethyst itself it just had to be worked with long long hours to create this this frog and and the best thing of it is when you put it under the light it just shines oh it glows it just glows it's, it's on fire it is really nice but I wish I had a genie unit to work with it. It would have been so perfect. Amazing. Yeah. I love what I do. This is beautiful. Is this Ricolite? That's Serpentis. Stunning and Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, I assume? Yeah. Absolutely amazing. How long have you been? Over uh, 40 years. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Did you learn from family? Oh wow. Self taught. That is stunning. Self taught. Um, yeah, I make my own beads too right yeah. here. What? These are all handmade beads, coral beads, gold beads, 20, 24 karat gold beads here. And then the bird. It's all hand done. And this is lander blue turquoise in here. Real lander blue. Real lander. And not the stuff you know you see on Facebook all the time, selling for three dollars a carat. No, that's the that's the real stuff. That's the real thing. Unfortunately, it's such a beautiful turquoise. A lot of people are kind of tricked with hubei. Yeah. And um, you can tell that it's so much finer than it the is. dots, and you'll see it is. in hubei. And the darker, darker. 
absolutely yeah. amazing. And Hubei is fun. Hubei is great. But it's not Landerbrook. No. <laughs> That's, you know. I have Persian turquoise. Beautiful Persian with my right. <gasps> oh. <laughs> it makes a bit of a mess, but it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a hoarder with stones. Good. That's a good thing to hoard. Oh. Better that than, than uh, pillows and... No, no. and <laughs> yeah. No. I have... You come to my studio, you see it. Trays and trays of sujulite, lapis, and just beautiful stuff. So, how long have you been making the ice creams? About seven years. Seven years. Are those mammoth ivory? Or walrus ivory? Mammoth. Yeah. Stunning. Mammoth. You got great taste. <laughs> <laughs> Can you find that in Zuni at all? You have to, you, you got your connections. I have connections, yeah. It's <laughs> so great. I don't think anything would make as good as a cone. I yeah. know. Then, uh, I have tried, tried everything. Uh, and other it things? Don't, it don't. I had to go look for some, but then I contacted my my supplier and he had some, so I bought some recently. And now we used to be exclusive with our ice creams for this lady in West Hollywood. And when COVID hit, she just closed everything down. Oh, man. So now I have to introduce it to the world audience. They are so special. There's a thousand people out there that would love that exclusivity again. Yeah. We just got to find them. Yeah. They're out there. Yeah. There's someone who's going to say, well, what do they want? I'll give you 10 times the price because those are just amazing. Yeah. These are award-winning style pieces. Yeah. Do you ever enter in competition? All the time. I have lots and lots of awards. I've been recognized in Ladies People magazine and all kinds of magazines. Oh, I'm I've not surprised. I've the New York um, National Museum of the American Indian as one of the top Native women artists. Yeah, New York City, I have a, I'm, I'm an honor designer of work. Self-taught. Self-taught. Award-winning. Yes. The real deal. But I don't... Well, yeah, I don't, most people would have the ribbons hanging off yeah, the table. No, no, no. <laughs> and that's okay, but... but I'm pretty humble. Oh, I probably would have been too scared to talk to you if you had your <laughs> had your trophies standing up on the ground over here. <laughs> no, I don't boast about myself. I just, you know, people know who I am and... I'm, I'm very grateful to be blessed, to be so fortunate enough to acquire the materials I had because I grew up from nothing, absolutely nothing. I was so close to my dad and my dad was taken away. He was a firefighter that used to fight forest fires all over California and he lost his life trying to save million dollar homes when I was just nine years old and my mom struggled and struggled and she became an alcoholic and wasn't able to take care of us and I had to be the per big person to come up for my sisters I had three sisters two sisters at the time and I was just determined I might have been the black sheep, but this is what I have. <laughs> I'm very proud of what I, where I have been and where I come from, and I'll never forget where I come from. This is just the blessing that I have received from being who I am. Amazing. And it shows. Thank it's you. just absolutely jaw-dropping, stunning. Uh, Thank you. And you glow. <laughs> like you're a very sincere and genuine person. Thank you. Thank you. I try to be. You know, a lot yeah. of folks would have their People magazine here. <laughs> like, laminated to that page. Yeah. No. Veronica, I can't thank you enough. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. You're such you a made blessing. my day. No. Hopefully somebody comes and buys everything and I really make so. your day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you.